Welcome to Your City Connections, where you get to meet entertaining and informative guests. Guests such as an artist with a brush, or with a camera, and guest with a violin. City Connections, providing insightful interviews with favorite son, Lieutenant Governor Todd Lamb. To City Commissioners, the Mayor. Interviews with a rodeo queen, to beauty queen, and even a NBA player. Welcome to City Connections. My special guest today is an Enid resident and local artist, Deron Lewis. All right, thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, I know that you're Mississippi native. You've been, you've lived in Illinois and California, and now you're here in Oklahoma. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, like you said, um, I was uh, raised in Mississippi, um, and I lived there for up to my teens. Then I left and moved to uh, Chicago. Um, from there, I moved to Minnesota. Um, and I stayed there for like three or four years. And then I moved home when my dad died. Um, and after that excursion, I moved to California okay. um, for 15 years. So I'm glad to be here. <laughs> now the big question, what inspired you to become an artist? Well, my dad. My dad was uh, the biggest inspiration. Um, I remember coming into the house when I was like 10 years old and I saw um, a picture of my mother uh, on the mantle and uh, I thought a camera took it. And I, was, I asked him, I said, Dad, uh, who uh, took this picture of Mom? He said, oh, boy, I drew that. And I just, <laughs> just melted, you know. I, I couldn't believe it because it looked so real. And um, so I just went and got some paper, uh, writing paper, you know, school paper, <laughs> and uh, sat down and uh, pretended I was watching the news with him. And before the news was off, I finished him. And uh, I showed it to him, and he said, boy, you're pretty good. You know, so uh, I just continued from that, that forward on, you know. Okay. Now, I know you've been very busy since you moved into the Indy community. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember when we both were teachers at a local private school. You were doing the visual art, and I was doing music art. Uh, now, my kids were in your class, and yeah. some of the other music students were in your class, and they learned a lot. And it's like this picture here I have. Now that picture my son drew of me, it was a younger photo, and then this one, Allison Ramsey, one, one of the students also drew. And I, and I attribute that to you teaching them art, you know, and I really appreciate it because the arts just can open up the, a mind and the creativity of a kid, so. Right. Um, now, can you tell me how that teaching experience was for you? Well, it was uh, pretty exhilarating, you know. Um, I was uh, very happy to be able to teach uh, children, uh, you know, some facets of, of art. Um, and to me, uh, just because it's called art doesn't mean that you're just sketching people, you know, or still life. Uh, that's the future because, you know, you have to have roads, you have to have bridges built, you have to have uh, buildings uh, designed. And, uh, it is the source, art is the source of these architects and uh, designers of automobiles and things of that nature. So anything uh, that deals with art, um, you know, is, is very important for, for children to have it. So, you know, I, 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 think, I think that it's a great contribution uh, to have children, uh, you know, doing art, so. I agree that you know, engineering is starts off with art, and then you you're also in construction, right? Yes, you're in construction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, I remember you having several art exhibits here for the local community for to help other nonprofits. I recall one where the even the students were you had the students at the school also part of it, um, and you also did a mural for the library. Can you tell me about some of these art exhibits you've done? Yes, um, a couple of years ago I um, featured a 75 piece uh, exhibit um, for the nonprofits like um, Hope Outreach, um, I think Catholic Charities, um, the 
St. Jude's Children Research Center out of Memphis, Tennessee, and I wanted to contribute something to society um, and give back to help uh, others. Uh, and I think it was a, a it was a great feeling for me to be able to be there for them, uh, and um, I think that you know we we all need to contribute something back to society. So I just wanted to be different, you know, be a different artist, uh, and give back along with uh, uh, my producing the art. Now, what inspired you to do the mural, and how many? What were the dimensions of it? Well, that goes back when I first moved here. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I, I heard about the land run, and I didn't know anything about the land run, so I went on the internet and researched and saw uh, the establishment, the, the, the uh, people who uh, came to, to make claims, staking out the land and stuff. Uh, and when I was a, a kid, I used to watch westerns you know, with my dad, so uh, that fascinated me. And uh, I just uh, took some pictures with my phone and uh, started sketching. And I believe I talked with you uh, regarding that. And uh, um, I didn't know that the city was looking for art when I was doing this thing. Uh, and it's a two-piece set, top and bottom. Uh, it is all the um, pieces are screwed together, small ones and large ones, in order to uh, get the design of the boundary of the city. And um, uh, I, I just progressively placed uh, the, the history of Enid on it. And um, the former uh, senator of uh, uh, Oklahoma came by, uh, Norman Lamb, he came by to take a look at it and uh, uh, got me in contact with his son, who is the lieutenant governor of the state. And um, it wasn't geared toward Oklahoma City, so we refocused uh, back to uh, Enid, and uh, Enid purchased it. Okay. Now, what inspires you to give back to the community? What inspires you to do that? Well, as I was growing up, uh, my dad was a mayor. And um, my granddad, you know, being a U.S. Marshal, uh, my grandmother, she was the uh, treasurer of the, uh, you know, small city. Uh, I used to farm maybe about five gardens, large ones, you know, when I was growing up, about eight years old. Uh, and we, um, we had grocery store and gas station, things of that nature, laundry, uh, laundromat and clothing store. Um, I used to watch my mom and my dad uh, put food and clothing at our door and allowed the citizens to come and just choose what they wanted. They was givers. So, you know, it was just innate pretty much uh, for me to uh, give back. So I'm, I'm moving the legacy on of giving back. Okay. Now. In addition to the library mural, the mural that you did in this place in the library, mm -hmm. you also did one for the Enid Fire Department. Well, you did a sketch for the Enid Fire Department. Yes. Um, now, why focus on firefighters? Hmm. There's another thing that um, uh, one year, uh, I think it was in 1973, um, me, my two younger sisters, and my dad, we went to Chicago to visit our relatives. And uh, at that particular time, he was a mayor still. Um, he got off the CTA, the uh, transit, and he fell uh, to the uh, sidewalk and into a heart attack. And um, <clears throat> the fire department was the first to get to him. Uh, and, you know, they administered their, you know, professional uh, help and uh, got him to the hospital. So the, the mayor, which was uh, Richard J. Daly, at that time, um, heard of a visiting mayor in the hospital uh, with a heart attack. He paid, uh, the city of Chicago paid for the entire medical uh, expense. And um, I just, you know, wanted to continue uh, giving back to the firefighters because uh, one thing about the firefighters, I, I, I know that they are gonna be there. You know, it, it doesn't matter uh, and they don't even care. These are some things that I know that they don't care about. They don't care about what race you are. They don't care about your age, what size you are, where you live, where you're going, or where you're coming from. Uh, they're going to be there. And, you know, I think that we ought to, you know, pay some uh, contributions back to the fire department and show our appreciation because in some cases they may uh, even lose their life 
trying to save your property, let alone your own self, you know. Um, uh, and they leave behind children, parents, wives, relatives, you know, and friends, host of friends, you know, especially the family of the firefighters. So, you know, and uh, they don't just come out to put fires out, you know. So uh, I want to give back all over the country uh, to these people. Okay, very inspiration. If you're just joining us today, I have local artist and Enid resident, Ron Lewis, but we'll have more after this. Welcome back to City Connections. My guest today is Deron Lewis, local artist. Now Deron, we were talking about the mural that you did for the library and also for the Enid Fire Department. Uh, aside from the things you've done in the Enid community, you also did one for the Chicago Fire Department, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, you travel all, all over the places. Cause tell us about some of the things, and you've also did something for uh, the family of Harriet Tubman, the Harriet Tubman Museum. Can you tell me some about some of the other things you've done out of state? Yes. Um, well, and speaking of uh, Harriet Tubman, um, who is a phenomenal uh, woman, uh, was a phenomenal woman, um, I did a um, uh, fire painting of her, uh, and I called uh, the museum over there to let them know that I did have that, and I emailed it to them, uh, a picture of it and they fell in love with it. So um, uh, they, you know, assisted me in getting there uh, and, you know, paid uh, a few accommodations for me. And um, I did a demonstration of how I did it. Uh, and uh, I met the mayor of uh, uh, Cambridge, uh, Maryland, which uh, that's where Harriet was born uh, and was a slave. Um, I, I, it was a great experience. I found out a lot of stuff that uh, I really didn't know uh, about Harriet Tugman. Uh, that was a long, long travel for her to get from Cambridge, Maryland to uh, Pennsylvania uh, with all of that water. Um, it's hundreds of miles to, to go there, you know, and uh, uh, she traveled by foot. Um, and when she traveled through the water, it came up to her chin. Um, that's how deep it was uh, at the shallowest part. So, you know, she was of great courage. And um, I, I, I just wanted to give back to her uh, and her legacy. And um, I, I mean, I just found out that uh, she was hit uh, in the head and she started having dreams and uh, seizures. And that prompted her wanting to uh, get uh, free from slaves, uh, slavery, and uh, uh, get the other people out. Um, a master threw uh, an object at his own slave but missed him and hit her. Uh, I think she was between 11 and 14 years old at that time. So um, it's, it's a lot of information over there, you know, wealthy of uh, uh, history over there. And as far as the Chicago Fire Department, what inspired you to do something for the Chicago Fire Department? Uh, that's when my dad, you know, had that uh, heart attack and uh, I wanted to give back for, for their servitude, um, you know, in the community uh, of Chicago. Likewise here, um, Enid was the very first uh, fire department that I donated something to. So they have the oldest piece of uh, my art. Okay. Now you've been featured on, is this a great state or what? twice for the yeah, state of Oklahoma. How was that experience for you? It kind of follows well, it was, it was real, yeah. you know, right. surreal in, right. in a sense. It was, it was great. Uh, I enjoyed uh, uh, being on, you know, Channel 4, Care for Um and fortunate to uh, get on there twice, uh, along with, you know, being in the media, um, uh, the newspaper at least eight, nine times here. Um, I was also televised in Arkansas and I hadn't even visit, visit that uh, state yet. Um, I had a friend to call me and tell me that I was on the news there. Um, I think I was 
uh, in some magazine in, in Arizona. Um, I yet have to find it. Um, and Alan Klepper, you know, that's, that's my main. Radio. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like the way Alan. Okay. As I look around your studio, I see pencil and pastel and, of course, fire painting. Um, mm -hmm. What other types do you do and what can we expect from you next? <laughs> well, I do, I do charcoal. Okay, um, I, I do ink. Uh, just haven't produced any yet. Um, the next uh, medium that I've thought about uh, and it's quite, uh, hmm, I don't know, it's dust. Dust? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the very dirt you walk on, I'm going to use that as a medium to do art. Okay. It's quite different. <laughs> Love to see that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if you join us, we have Duran Lewis, local artist. We'll be back after this with another special guest. Welcome back to City Connections. My guest today is Duran Lewis, and now joining us is Dominique Phillips, another artist in the Indian community. Okay, Dominique, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I am from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, that's where I was born, raised, and am now. Um, that's also where um, I really, the roots of me being an artist has stemmed from. So um, I'm a student in school, I work two jobs, and uh, my passion and love is art, so that's what I do. Okay, so what inspired you to become an artist? Um, definitely, it definitely chased me down. I wasn't until I was about 16 years old in high school when um, an art teacher of mine just happened to scoop me up and really uh, show me that I had a talent in art, and from there just was a domino effect. It came very quickly for me, uh, the art and skill of it. So okay. yeah, she was inspiring. <laughs> now, tell us about the type of art you do. So I do a lot of um, portraits is what um, the foundation, so that goes along with being a expressionism and uh, realism art. So doing a lot of that. Um, I also uh, branch off into just doing some abstract work and things like that. So. Okay, okay, very good. Now, this, you guys are gonna have a combined effort that you're gonna be doing a mural for the Enid Police Department. Can you guys tell me about what roles you'll play in that mural? Well, um, the role that I will play is uh, strategically uh, placing each subject where I think that it should go because it's gonna be a, a progressive type mural. Uh, it's gonna include um, maybe some badges uh, of old uh, and a three-wheel cycle uh, that, you know, they had as, on the police department. So uh, it's, it's going to be strategically uh, uh, placed, all the subjects on there. 
Definitely, and I know we're both uh, talented in just the area of bringing realism to art, bringing what's realistic in our world and make it uh, expressing that with our art. So that's definitely something that we're collaborating and working on uh, to bring that to this mural. It's a really awesome mural. So. Okay. Now the mural, what type of um, medium will be used in order to for it? I know there will for sure be charcoal and pencil with that medium. Um, yes, it will be uh a mixed medium of uh, charcoal and pencil. I, I, I would like to make sure that, you know, in this project that um, her expert, you know, uh, art techniques uh, will be expressed on this mural. Um, and she, she bring, she bringing um, <laughs> some, some good stuff. Uh, so, you know, I'm proud uh, to have her uh, to help me along with this project. Okay. Now, what are the dimensions for this particular mural is going to be? Well, um, so the mural is five feet tall and it's 90 inches wide. Uh, so, yeah, okay. it is. Yes. <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> It'll be fun to tackle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A lot of work. Now, so I guess you're going to be using different expressions in the painting. You say you're going to be using realism and then it's just going to be... So basically, yeah. just capturing really um, the tone, the aura of, you know, faces um, like the motorcycles, just the history, the uh, foundation of Enid, really, just in making sure that that is expressed as well as it can be with both of our um, talent, so. Yes. Now, what is the expected date? How, how long do you think this mural is going to take you guys to? Well, I'm, I'm looking at maybe the spring of next year, perhaps, because mm -hmm. she worked and I work too, you know, and uh, uh, doing this type of work uh, is tedious and uh, it, it takes a while to to complete. Uh, if we were totally working on art, I, I, I would say by the end of this year we'd be finished, but mm. um, it, it it takes a lot of uh, erasing. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Okay, well I definitely look forward to the finished piece. So yeah. you have to contact me and let me you know, see it <laughs> right. when it's finished, so. And thank you, Dominique, for thank being my you. guest. Thank you, Deron. Once again. All right. Thank you. And thank you, viewers, for watching on CD Connections. Join us next week or another time to watch a different artist or a different person with a different talent.